Hello, welcome to this tutorial about mastering Ultra Glow. And we're going to be taking you through 10 levels of Ultra Glow mastery. So you'll learn what to do if you just need the basics or if you want to go deep with this powerful plugin. Now we're in After Effects, but Ultra Glow works exactly the same way, whatever host you're using. Level one is the default settings. So let's come into Sapphire Lighting and go to Ultra Glow. And this is what we get. Now with the default settings, there are basically three controls that you should be looking at. The first one is at the top and it's brightness. So obviously this controls how bright our glow is gonna be. It has more consequences than you might think when you're first looking at it, but we'll come to those later. The second one is threshold. A threshold determines what is gonna get glowed what value is going to get glowed. So if we look at the show down here, and we look at threshold, you can see that with a lower threshold, more of the original image is going to get glowed up. And with a higher threshold, only the brightest elements are going to get ultra glowed. The third control is the next one down, which is glow width. So this just controls how fat or skinny our glow is going to be. Now, because we're working with ultra glow, at the default settings, having a glow width of zero doesn't actually take down your glow. We'll find out why in the later levels, but you can see we can get some very different results just by playing around with these three settings. If I come to my next clip, and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing as we did before. Now, when I'm working with something like a, a video layer, where I'm not quite sure where the levels are that I want to get uh, glowed, I leave my brightness quite high and come into the threshold first, because this gives me my base area of where I'm gonna be glowing up. At that point, I can adjust the brightness up or down, and the glow width lets me finish up the effect. In level two, let's have a look at some of the presets. Ultra Glow comes bundled with a, uh, a large number of different presets, and of course, you can also save your own. Now, some of these presets are more designed for text, so you can usually find the ones that work better on text either have a big glowing outline or they'll say something in the description up in the top right hand corner. I'm going to choose an electric blue and click on load. And once we've loaded our preset, I'm going to use those same three controls that we used in level one. So that's going to be threshold, brightness and glow width. And finding the right balance for our shot. Level three takes the threshold into a slightly different place. I'm gonna turn my threshold all the way down to zero, leaving all the other defaults as they are. And this gives me a really big, deep glow. Now threshold isn't the only place where we can limit where our glow is being applied. Threshold controls things with the luminance. We also have threshold add color. So now if I take this eyedropper and take it over the green, for example, you see anything green or within that environment is now not glowing. So if I take this up here and maybe just take the brightness value down to 50 and change the hue around, I can sort of change where it is my glow is or isn't being applied depending on the color. And I can keyframe this as well. Now, because I'm in After Effects, I can use a handy, little expression to just be able to go wiggle three uh, and one. So three times a second, it's gonna wiggle that color out a little bit. As we do a quick round preview, I can now get flashing lights based on the color of my image. Level four, as we're growing confidence with Ultra Glow, we can start to use some of the other controls as well. Now I'm gonna use a preset here, which I always come back to when I want to design my own effect. And this is just called full reset. This is basically what we would be applying if we were just using S glow. I'm just gonna turn the threshold down and the brightness up. Now I'm gonna use glow fall off and glow bias to make some big changes to this effect. So if I bring the glow fall off up, we start to get a skinnier, hotter looking glow. And if I change my bias up as well, so that's now only affecting the fattest areas. Now, a couple of good ways to, to use this is to have a positive fall off. So here we've got 0 
and a negative bias. So this is minus 0.08. And that gives us a nice sort of balance. Very, very hot there. We can also use a lower fall off, a higher bias, and come in and use a very low glow width. And this can also help just to give us that sort of really nice um, hot inner core that we want in our glow. Now this is usually supported by the feature we're gonna look at in level five, afterglow. So I've got an ultra glow applied and the full reset preset used again. Let's just turn this up a little bit, make our width quite low. And we're gonna take a look now at Afterglow. Now Afterglow is a supplementary glow process. So if I turn up my Afterglow width, you can see I now maintain that sort of hot inner core that we had with just the regular glow. But now I'm getting a nice soft fall off as well. Now the Afterglow is also calculated on the main brightness. And also we can help to change this as well with our glow fall off and glow bias that we had previously. So we can get some really hot natural looking glows just by increasing the value on afterglow. Now the primary glow and the afterglow both have different colors that we can add to them. So what this means is that we can colorize two different levels of glow. We have our hot glow in our nice magenta or hot pink and they have the afterglow in a bit more of a subtle blue, helping to, uh, helping to sell that effect. Level six is all about how we deal with the width. We have our regular glow text with just the default ultra glow effect applied to it. But at the bottom of the primary glow, I can change up the width X and Y to stretch this out a little bit. If I increase the X, we increase the glow width horizontally. And if instead I do Y, let's take that up to six, we can increase that vertically. Now, unless we really want these kind of highly stylized effects, I would, I would say we want to keep a little bit of, uh, of width in both the X and Y, but we can get some very sharp effects by having those set to zero. We can also add a little bit of chromatic aberration style effect by just making the uh, width green and blue a little bit different than the red or a little bit different than each other. And this just kind of subtly adds in another uh, amount of color into our glow. Now, not to be outdone, of course, we can come into Afterglow and glow these up as well. In fact, the default values have some form of, of Afterglow stretch in there. And like with the primary glow, we have the stretch X and Y. And this works a little bit differently than the, uh, the regular width X and Y, but we get a similar sort of result. It's looking really nice. And we also have the addition of horizontal and vertical streaks. So take a look at the top of our U. I can now add in just a slight boost to those peaks using my horizontal and vertical streaks. And you'll find that by building up these different values, you can get a much more interesting look than you could do just with the X and Y width. So if we look at this on some real footage, do what we always do, just change up the threshold a little bit. So we get the glow working at the right levels. And I can even keep my glow width at one here and come directly into the afterglow. So I can stretch that out, make some big horizontal streaks, change the color of my glow with the eyedropper, and just do final adjustments on brightness so we get our nice glow interacting with the footage. Level seven is all about atmosphere. And atmosphere is a fantastic and quick way to add a little bit of extra life into our glows. Again, we're with our test text and at the default settings. I'm just gonna take my threshold down, take that down to 0.1, just so we got a really big glow to start with. And I'm gonna go and turn on my atmosphere. And we can now see this adds a little bit of smoke into our, uh, into our glow. Now I can change up things like the atmosphere amplitude 
the frequency and a speed. I'll take that up maybe to around about five. And if we preview that, you can see I've got a nice bit of smoke just going through my glow. And if I come to my next clip, of course, we also have presets that use atmosphere. So something like hot in here, I'll come in, I'll adjust up my threshold to just bring in the, the highlights in the windows. And you can see the atmosphere is already turned on. And this lets us use ultra glow just to add a bit of haze in here. It's nice. Good use of atmosphere is actually one of the, uh, the big secrets of a gorgeous looking glow. As we move into level eight, we're gonna start looking at highlights. I would just turn highlights on from my default text and just set a RAM preview. You can start to see what we can do with it. Now by default, highlights is coming in, darkening down some areas and brightening up others. And it also animates, again, giving us a lot of life into our glow effect. Let's just do another full reset. I'm gonna turn my highlights on. And because we've been working on a full reset, it's not gonna do anything. So with highlights, what we're looking for to begin with are these highlight lights and highlight darks, because these determine the brightness ratios of what our highlights are gonna be doing. We have our highlight brightness here, but that's not as important in my opinion as the highlight darks and highlight lights. If I leave highlight darks at one, our image is gonna stay the same brightness. If I take this down to zero, it's gonna darken up our image and the highlight's gonna be a lot easier to see. In a similar way, if I take lights down, this makes a more subtle, lower contrast version of, that, of the highlights. I can control all of this using the brightness control. So set the brightness to one. Let's set our uh, lights up to about 1.6. And because I don't want our text to be quite as dark as it is here, I'm gonna bring my darks up maybe to about 0.75. The other interesting things we have to start with are gonna be things like the octaves. If I bring my octaves down, I get a more simple pattern. If I bring it up, I get a more complex pattern. So it's sort of a, almost a, a, a fire lightning type of thing here. Let's take that down to one. And I can also choose my layers as well. This also helps to bring in more complexity uh, and, and more kind of stripes into, uh, into my highlights. Great. Now this is also auto animating, but it's not doing anything yet when I preview. The reason for that is simple. My highlight speed is still set to zero. As soon as I set my highlight speeds up a little bit, we now get our highlights moving through the text. I can change the direction on that just by setting a negative speed value. To truly master ultra glow, you also have to know what edges are doing. If I come to my test text, default settings, I can turn on edge detect, and this is gonna to try to find the edges of my footage. And I can smooth those edges out a little bit. And we get this big, you know, big glowy effect. So let's turn the brightness down a little bit. We'll turn our threshold up as well. And on the edge combined, we can choose whether we're gonna screen, add to get an even brighter combination, or we can just go edges only. So let's come into Ultra Glow now, bring that up just a little bit, and I'll add in some highlights as well. You can see that we can use these edges to make some cool neon looking text uh, very, very simply indeed. And of course, you know that there are gonna be presets that use edges to a large degree. Mainly these are gonna be working best on text. And we can even play these back in the preset browser to see what they're gonna do for us. Level 10 mastery is really simple. It's about not being afraid to experiment and combine different versions of these effects together. Now, a lot of time has been spent creating up these presets. So if you need a little bit of uh, inspiration or you wanna know how a particular effect was done, just load in the preset and try to take it apart or come in and just start to mix. Level one, changing up threshold, brightness, and glow width. Level two was taking the presets. We can skip over that one. Level three was about taking off some of the brightest colors using add color. And this then allows us to balance out the effect with our brightness again. 
Level four was about coming in and balancing up our fall off and bias. Bring that in there. Level five, obviously working the afterglow to our best advantage and using our level six knowledge to stretch and streak our way to success, making this auto animate with a little bit of atmosphere. And the same way that we could use the, uh, the darks and the lights within highlights, we can also do the same sort of thing within atmosphere as well to really completely customize this up. Speaking of highlights, use our level eight knowledge. Just to add a wee bit of highlight in there. Stick in a tiny amount of edge smoothing as well. Now a true ultra glow master is gonna be creating up a glow that complements your footage exactly. It's not always about making the biggest, boldest glows possible. It's sometimes about just making sure that footage fits in a sort of subtle ambience about it. I hope this has been useful for you and expanded out your knowledge of Sapphire's Ultra Glow. For hours of free tutorials and the latest product news and to download a free trial of any of the Boris FX products, join us at borisfx.com. My name is Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects, and I'll see you again soon. Thank you.